This is me on the sidewalk. And this is me attempting to social distance. You can see I'm in the road. In American cities, pedestrian infrastructure is kind of all over the place. At worst, sidewalks don't exist. At best, they're on par with the lane of traffic. The COVID-19 pandemic is spotlighting America's lack of walking space. People are supposed to stay at least six feet apart, but on a lot of sidewalks, that's just not possible. Cities do have a lot of space for cars, though. Los Angeles, for example, has more than 300 square miles of space for driving and parking cars. That's a lot of space put to waste. Now, some cities are trying to adapt some of that car space into people space. This isn't some new solution. It's actually been around for a long time. It's called an open street or a cyclovia. It's an idea that started with a group of activists in the 1970s in Bogota, Colombia. They'd studied in the US and witnessed the negative impacts of the post-war auto boom. When they returned, they worried that Bogota was heading in the same direction. So they started a movement to reclaim the streets. What started as a low-tech protest eventually got support from the city. Now, Bogota has what it calls the world's largest temporary park, 75 miles of roads, where each Sunday, 1.5 million people come out to walk and bike. The ideas caught fire all around the world. More than 70 cities now have similar car-free street days. Now, some cities are looking to these programs to make social distancing a little easier. Take Oakland, California. Now, with coronavirus, the city is trying something new, turning 74 miles, nearly 10% of its roads, over to walkers and bikers. No one's like around and touching people and that's all. No one's around and touching people, so that's a good thing. Let me <laughs> That's my editor, Teresa Chin. She lives on one of the new open streets in Oakland. The street that I live on has become one of Oakland's slow streets, which means that uh, technically cars aren't supposed to come through unless you live on the street. Um, that's not quite happening, but it is a lot slower. There are a lot more kids out, a lot more neighbors out. Um, so that feels really different than normal. Here in Seattle, um, there's a similar program. I took a bike ride into the Central District, which is a neighborhood sort of near where I live. Um, and that was one of the sites of Seattle's first closure. It just had the feel of like a chill day at the park. I think we're discovering just how natural it feels to be able to spread out and use our streets more for recreational space. Dozens of cities are testing similar street closures. Part of the reason Seattle and Oakland were able to do this so quickly, they'd already done a lot of the legwork ahead of time. Oakland had just unveiled a major bike plan that they'd spent years putting together. Seattle had a network of slower city streets for walkers and bikers to use. So when coronavirus hit, they were able to repurpose these networks. Seattle and Oakland both chose to kind of do a low-tech uh, program. They're not relying on police officers. They're relying on a lot of low-tech signage. And Oakland actually has a sign-up form that people can go on to. And they have all sorts of community jobs that people can volunteer for. I had a couple of neighbors fortify their signs for slow streets with like Halloween decorations and some flags to really kind of get the point across. I wonder how it would work when you have more drivers on the road. Seattle's thinking about this too. It sees this as a bit of an experiment for something more permanent. I think if this is successful and we find that this type of, you know, very local access works on these, these greenways, it might be something where we can find ways to upgrade these temporary closures into more permanent permanent closures and really make these greenways into things that are, are different in character than the streets around them and, and are more attractive uh, to people that maybe weren't using them before. When this pandemic ends, the world is probably going to be different in a lot of ways. And going forward, cities now have a real opportunity to redesign themselves for people.